Hello, my name is Kayla Hansman. I'm a dietitian here in Cincinnati um, with experience in acute adult inpatient as well as some community pediatric um, and just a wealth of nutrition and community hands-on education. So on behalf of the Spina Bifida Coalition of Cincinnati, I'd like to welcome, to, welcome you to the third session of NOURISH. NOURISH is an acronym for Nutritious Cooking, Budgeting, and Preparing Recipes for Sustaining Health. I'm really excited to be sitting here with a, a few individuals here in Cincinnati that were recruited by the Spina Bifida Coalition, who will be joining me tonight along with Meg Galvin, a certified executive chef from the Midwest Culinary Institute at Cincinnati State. This program is sponsored by the Elsa Heisel Suli Foundation, as well as the Kroger Foundation. As I mentioned, Nourish is a nutrition education program for adults with spina bifida. The four-part series encourages improved eating behaviors by teaching targeted components of nutrition while demonstrating the skills necessary to safely make simple, healthy meals at home. So the four topics covered in this program include vitamins, minerals, and protein, as well as low calorie meals, fiber, and hydration. So as I mentioned, these programs had two prior topics, the vitamins and minerals and the protein, um, as well as the low calorie meals. So tonight we hope to kind of continue and build off of that low calorie topic as we discuss the topic of fiber and hopefully impact not only how you look at food, but how you purchase food, budget for food, and how you take all that knowledge and apply it to your meal preparation at all. So again, tonight's topic is fiber, and I will be leading you through our lecture portion. If you guys have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to reach out, um, but we'll get started with our objectives. So tonight, we would like you to be able to identify foods that are high in fiber and why this is important for a healthy bowel, as well as assisting with lower calorie intake. We would like you to also be able to list fiber-rich ideas for healthy breakfast, lunch, dinner, and also some of those snack options. Identify healthy alternatives to food items and recipes, and those that are both fiber containing and low calorie. Understand the important relationship between fiber and hydration for bowel motility. So, one does not go without the other, and equally important for that. All right, so a good set of things to get us going. We're just going to kind of start with the basics here. So, fiber, um, kind of rewinding a little bit, we've got three different macronutrients that make up our foods. They are protein, which you guys probably talked about a little bit before, fat, and carbohydrate. So within those three macronutrients, we have different components within them. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate that the body cannot digest or absorb. So it kind of passes through our body a little bit different than all of the other macronutrients. In fact, it's not absorbed. It's not utilized in that same way. And that is, you know, kind of your first clue as to why it, it helps with our motility. Um, it is a substance that is found in plants, another good clue why it is a carbohydrate macronutrient, and it is mainly coming from unprocessed whole foods. So the strawberry here on the table, good example of a fiber-containing item. Um, there, with, there is an exception to that, and we'll touch on that on different fiber-containing supplements and how the food system has kind of snuck in some different you know, fibers into other foods. But for the most part... What I want you guys to think about when you think about fiber is a plant-based food that's whole, unprocessed, not touched by man. All right, so kind of continuing on with that, most carbohydrates in our body. So again, that macronutrient wing of carbohydrates is typically broken down into sugar molecules in our body. So whether it's a sugar or whether it's a whole grain carbohydrate, all of those, the end product is a sugar molecule. So our body does that typically, but when we eat fiber, it, we can't break that down into sugar molecules. So it's not processed the same way, again, that those other carbohydrates are. Instead, it just passes through the body undigested. So it moves along with our food, but it's just kind of aiding in that digestion process, but it's not itself being absorbed into our body, into our bloodstream. It is also kind of considered food for the healthy bacteria in our gut. So if you've ever heard of, you know, you've, the fact that you've got bacteria and microbes and living organisms in your stomach and in your intestine, that's true. And so fiber is actually one of the food sources for those bacteria. So while our body isn't absorbing them, the bacteria in our gut is breaking it down. And that's kind of why we get that gaseous feeling sometimes is because it's letting off gases 
as the fiber is broken down, but that's good for it. We like the healthy bacteria in our gut. We want to keep it happy. So keeping our fiber intake consistent and high throughout the day is, is good for that reason. Um, so again, because it's not absorbed by the body, it does help regulate our body's use of sugars. So again, rewinding, it's not broken down into sugar, but instead it helps our body's utilization of that um, and kind of keep them, keep hunger and keep our blood sugar in check. Sound good so far? All right. Seems too good to be true. And it is. Um, so fiber intake, what that looks like. Most Americans consume only about 15 grams a day. Um, but with that said, most children and adults both need about 20 to 30 grams. And that varies based on your size and, you know, just your calorie level in general. But in general, we need to shift that intake over 20 to closer to 30 grams a day. Um, so again, recommendations with this is, you know, with anything in life, slow, slowly but surely. You know, we don't have to go from zero to 100, especially with fiber, because that could almost backlash at us a little bit. So slowly increase those daily amounts until you are at that recommended goal level. Um, with that said too, when we're talking about fiber intake, we also have to emphasize water. Fiber absorbs water. And so if you're not taking an extra water to account for the fiber that you're eating, it's going to pull from you know what you may already have. And maybe you're not drinking enough water as it is. And then you almost, you know, it could dehydrate you or wouldn't move through our body the same way. Makes sense so far? Sound good? So again, especially with that fiber, getting, you know, that allotment of water, you know, eight, eight ounce glasses a day or wherever that kind of leaves you, you know, your typical intake for, for water. All right. So we've got our carbohydrates. A fiber is a type of carbohydrate and we have two type of fiber classifications within that category as well. So the two classifications are soluble, which I just mentioned dissolves in water. And then we also have insoluble, which does not dissolve in bulk dissolve in water. So that makes it kind of easy for us to remember the two of them. Um, and then within that, we'll talk about the two different types of soluble fibers, what those look like, and then insoluble fibers, what those look like. But overall, what I want you guys to be thinking just mostly in general is, you know, just fiber as a unit, because you don't necessarily always see on a food label, it broken down into insoluble and soluble. And that's, that's not really the take home message. If, you know, you're getting more than one of the other that typically doesn't, you know, that's not bad. Overall, fiber is good. Increase both types. All right. So again, both fibers, soluble fiber, as I mentioned, dissolves in water. And what that does is it actually forms like a gel-like material. It can help lower up blood cholesterol because it's pulling those bad cholesterol, bad cholesterol levels out in the stool with it. Um, and it also, with that gel-like effect, can help lower our glucose levels. So with that, it helps our management of, you know, if we're getting into the bordering of diabetes, e increasing your intake of fiber can, again, kind of help offset that a little bit. Um, so soluble fiber is found in things like oats, peas, beans, apples, different types of citrus fruits, carrots, barley, and then xylem. So all of those might sound somewhat familiar except for the xylem. Um, and that is actually some people that do take like a fiber supplement, they um, will mix xylem husks into their water or, you know, into a crystal light drink or something like that. So that's the one thing that you won't typically see on the shelf like the other food products. Um, all right. So that's soluble fiber. Moving on to insoluble fiber. This actually is what increases that bulk and promotes the movement of materials through your digestive system. So. Like I said, it increases your bulk and helps with constipation or irregular stools. Um, so things that contain insoluble fiber are things like whole wheat flour, wheat bran. And so a lot of those products that you'll find in your whole grain breads and pastas and um, all that good stuff, brown rice, um, nuts, beans, and vegetables. So you'll notice beans are something that's repeated in both of these columns. So beans have both soluble and insoluble fiber. Um, different types of vegetables such as cauliflower, green beans, and potatoes. So I know sometimes potatoes get a bad rap, don't eat potatoes. Well, potatoes also do have some insoluble fiber. So with that said, the message kind of take home is typically fruits and vegetables also have more of the fiber in the skin. 
So as much as possible as you can leave the skin on the products, you're keeping a lot of that fiber in it as well. All right. So I'm a visual person and I know that this is a little bit small to read, um, but essentially this kind of goes over how fiber works. Um, in the stomach, soluble fiber mixes with that partially digested food in the stomach. And then it kind of slowly, as we get into um, the small intestine, that soluble fiber again, then kind of entraps sugars and cholesterol and slows the absorption into the body. So again, that um, sugar and cholesterol lowering effect. As we get over into the larger intestine, that insoluble fiber and xylem kind of kick in and they move through the large intestine to promote that regularity. Um, and then, of course, it's all excreted as um, feces or stool of the rectum. So fiber and disease, the connection between those is really important, really beneficial. Um, fiber does appear to reduce the risk of developing several conditions, including heart disease, like I mentioned before, with that cholesterol-lowering effect, diabetes with lowering blood sugar, diverticular disease, which is actually a disease where pockets form within the intestine, which make it really uncomfortable, you know, to go to the bathroom and digest certain foods. So keeping our bacteria and our small intestine and large intestine healthy with the fiber will kind of prevent some of those outpouchings and sacs, sacs from forming. Um, and then, like I said before, constipation, probably, I think, you know, what most of us struggle with all throughout America, and that's moving products and waste our body. So um, we'll talk about that more specifically on its own slide. Um, like I said, it's one of the most common GI complaints in the U.S. Um, and going back to what we said our typical fiber intake was below that recommended value, kind of they go hand in hand together. Um, and as you guys, um, you know, as we talk about here tonight, it's a typical condition associated with spina bifida. So constipation kind of going along with that can also make some urinary infections worse as it increases the fluid retention in your bladder. So one can kind of compound the other, making it, you know, almost a, a double increased effect. So consumption of fiber seems to, again, relieve some of those uh, sensations and feelings and prevent constipation. All right. So continuing on, as I mentioned before, we want to emphasize those whole food products, the unprocessed foods, foods without a label, fruits and vegetables. Again, a lot of those things that we mentioned around the perimeter of the store. Um, rather than some of the fiber supplements. Um, but again, you know, sometimes we just can't get everything from food and, you know, we're on the go or there just may be a day where, you know, you just didn't have as much and you're kind of feeling the effects. So there are um, different options out there that some people, some doctors will even recommend if it, you know, necessitates that. Um, you may have heard of some of these names like Metamucil, Citrusel, Fibercon. And, you know, why we say food first or those whole foods over the supplements is that they lack the variety of fibers typically. Um, they don't have those vitamins and minerals like our fruits and vegetables do um, and those other just beneficial nutrients and trace elements. So um, it's also kind of can be frustrating because the fiber gummies and some of the powders um, say on the label that they aid with bowel health, but they don't necessarily say that they assist with constipation. So you know, maybe they're feeding your gut bacteria in some way, but they're not necessarily increasing that stool full. Um, they're just actually, on the other hand, largely soluble fiber, which just soaks up fluids. So it may just form that gel, but it's not going to increase the bulk and move it out. So it may, again, just make you feel distended and uncomfortable, and that's not really our goal. Um, so there's certain fortified foods. So foods such as cereals, granola bars, yogurt, ice cream, all sorts of things that have fiber in them. And you pick up the label and you're like, why does this, you know, strawberry ice cream have fiber? Well, in theory, it does sound good. But again, like I said, a lot of these foods are highly soluble fiber. And so it'll just kind of soak up those fluids and bloat you. Um, in these different products, the fiber is usually listed that you can find on the ingredients list, either inulin or chicory root. Um, so again, like I said, some people complain of gassiness after foods like these. Um, but again, there's room for them, you know, again, water emphasize the importance of that, so that, you know, it's, if it's soaking up some of the water, you're also kind of helping flush it through with some of that water. Um, and then I would say also too, the biggest thing with these is check how much fiber is in them and what the serving size is. Um, 
you know, you could pick up one of them that I looked at the other day and it said two grams of fiber. Well, that was in two servings or two gummies. So natural instinct, just one gummy would do the trick. Well, that's only probably less than a gram of fiber. That's not going to do you much good. So again, if you're looking at something, you know, see if it gives you the breakdown on how much insoluble, how much soluble compare that what to your daily goal intake is, and then kind of see where that fits the picture of that. Sound good? All right. So let's talk real food. Sources of fiber. Um, different fruits, obviously, like we mentioned before, um, have total grams of fiber. So raspberries, one of the highest. One cup of that raspberries has eight grams of fiber. So to put that in perspective of your day, if you had a cup of raspberries at lunch, a cup of raspberries as a snack, you're already halfway to your goal for fiber of the day. So that's actually pretty good. I saw them on sale today at the store. So raspberries are a good source of fiber. Um, pears, again, good source with about five and a half, six grams. Apple, denoted with the skin, um, gives you about five there as well. Banana, orange, strawberries, again, all good sources of fiber. So if you don't like one, that's okay. There's other options. Mix and match, make a fruit salad, combine it with all this good stuff. Vegetables. So again, different things like green peas, broccoli are typically what I like to say is the darker the vegetable, the more color it is. Not only does it have more nutrients, but it's typically probably more fiber rich. So the two usually go hand in hand together. Um, and like it says here, green peas, some of the highest one cup has nine grams. Um, Brussels sprouts. We've got any fans in the crowd. Those have about four. Um, cauliflower, carrots, again, raw is denoted on these because as you cook, the fiber is denatured a little bit. It's broken down slightly, but again, it's okay to eat cooked vegetables. Again, you're still getting a lot of those nutrients, a lot of that fiber. It's just to note that it's broken down a little bit. But with that said, if you're almost feeling like you eat a raw vegetable and your stomach feels really upset, you might want to try cooking them for a little while just to kind of get adjusted to that increased intake. All right, continuing on with different types of grains. Again, we're looking for the, on the ingredients list, the best way to check is flip that box over. You want to see whole listed with the first ingredient. If it just says wheat bran or if it just says, you know, wheat, whatever, then it's not 100% whole grain product. And it probably doesn't have quite as much fiber as some of those others. So again, looking for whole or 100%, all of that will kind of ensure that that's the leading ingredient, and that's got the most of it. So some whole wheat pastas have upwards of six, um, seven grams of fiber. Barley, it's another it's an ancient grain. Um, cooked, one cup has six grams. Bran flakes are great. Quinoa, um, oat bran muffins, oatmeal, popcorn. I think that, that a lot of us like to see that as listed as a whole grain product, and it is. Um, so again, air pop popcorn is a great source of whole grain fiber, um, brown rice, brown whole wheat bread, and then rye bread as well. So some good options there. Um, kind of a, something else to note with some of, you know, the I, people say the brown products or the whole wheat products, they might not like them quite as much. As you're making that transition, another thing you can kind of do is mix half and half. If you're a white rice person and you're like, I don't know if I can do brown rice, try mixing them half. 50 50. Get a little bit of both and then kind of slowly, soon, I'm sure you're going to probably like the brown rice better because it has a little bit more flavor. It's almost got like a nuttiness um, or pair it with some vegetables or like a chicken broth and get some, you know, flavor going there. So Chef Meg will touch on all of that as well, I'm sure. All right. So legumes, nuts, and seeds. Um, split peas are some of the highest here. We've got 16 grams of fiber in those. Lentils, one cup has 15 grams. So lentils, as you guys may have touched on before, if not, it's a great source of plant-based protein. So not only are you getting a really, really good source of fiber there, you're getting a lot of protein as well. Um, so we know the two of those paired together, super good for fullness, keeping you kind of, you know, not starving in between your meals. Um, black beans also, baked beans, basically any kind of bean, garbanzo, chickpeas, um, white beans, navy beans, they're all good. Um, and we do get questions too, you know, should I do the dried beans? Absolutely. If you have time for that, if you don't have time, buy the low sodium <clears throat> beans, rinse them off, and that takes another third of the sodium off. So just buy the no salt added, rinse them again, and you're good to go. Almonds, pistachios, and sunflower kernels are also really, really good options. So one ounce of nuts, 
three grams of fiber. So how do we do this? How do we actually take these foods and put them throughout our day? So, you know, first things first, you can start it off with breakfast. So choosing a cereal or a bread with about three to five grams of fiber per serving. Um, again, like I said, can't say this enough, but looking for those grains that say whole grain or whole brand, um, or even include fiber in the name. Um, rolled oats is a really good option and not even just the instant packets, but if you get the whole ground oats, those are, you know, typically they're not as chopped up as, um, the instant packets are, um, switching to whole grains just again throughout the day. Like I said, the recommendation is just to eat at least half of your grains as whole grains. So like I said, if you're mixing the white and the brown rice, you're still meeting that, that goal and that recommendation. Um, so again, experimenting using brown rice, wild rice, barley, um, bulgur wheat, different things like that. You might not like quinoa, but you really like barley, you know, not going to suit everyone and you don't have to necessarily eat one or the other. Um, bulking up baked goods. If you guys like to bake and cook and get in the kitchen, you can try substituting whole grain flour for about half or maybe all of the white flour in that ingredient. Um, you can even try adding some crushed bran cereal, unprocessed wheat bran, um, or even just rolled oats into muffins, cakes, even pancakes and different things like that. Um, it's kind of cool to see that one fourth a cup and whole wheat flour used in baking gives your product three grams of fiber. So again, lots of easy ways to kind of sneak it in there. Um, as you guys saw in the previous slide, legumes and nuts and lentils and all that, adding white and black beans to canned soup or a salad, um, lots of fresh veggies, tor whole wheat tortilla chips and salsa can really you know, amp up a lunch from one to the other. Um, goes without saying, for many, many reasons, eating more fruits and vegetables is, is important. Um, again, rich in fiber, vitamins, minerals. Um, try to eat, you know, closest, I would say, three to five or more servings per day. Um, and again, we say eat the rainbow, lots of lots of color, lots of nutrients, lots of fiber throughout that spectrum. Uh, make your snacks count. Again, how many times do we reach for a veggie when we want to snack on something? You were doing that earlier, so I love it. We got our carrots down. Um, again, those fresh fruits, raw vegetables, um, even the low-fat or air pop popcorn, whole grain crackers, all make a really good choice. All right. So some simple swaps. Think about eat this, not that. Not that you can't eat this, but try this instead. So swapping mayo for avocado. Um, again, on a sandwich or on a wrap, something like that, it'll give you, again, a little bit more fiber with that avocado. Stacking on popcorn instead of potato chips. Making hummus a go-to dip. Yesterday was actually National Hummus Day or International Hummus Day. So we can celebrate a day late and make that our go-to dip. Um, putting almonds in your cereal or over your yogurt or maybe you made a smoothie, you know, crumble some of those on top. Um, sneak in different chia and flaxseed into your oatmeal. So both of those are really, really good sources of not only um, the fiber, but also protein. So it's a plant-based source. It really, really improves digestion um, and you, for the most part, can't taste it. So it's kind of a, a hidden ingredient. Um, grill asparagus on the side or really just any vegetable. You know, when you visualize that plate, we want you to visualize half of it being fruits or vegetables as much as possible. All right. So as I mentioned, low calorie foods are typically higher in fiber. So maintaining or losing weight is also more easily achieved when you kind of focus on filling your plate with high fiber foods. Um, so these are some of the best low carb, low carb and high fiber foods. Um, so again, the psyllium husks, that's something that might be necessary. I would say that that's probably more of like a doctor recommended food, not that you couldn't on your own, but typically that's mis mixed into baked products or even cereals. Um, or like I said, some people would actually just drink that as water. Um, chia seeds, 34 grams per 100 grams of fiber or per 100 grams of the food. Black seeds, almonds, avocados are phenomenal. Raspberries, like we touched on before. Artichokes, blackberries, and then our Brussels sprouts. So again, lots of color, lots of good options. Um, and I always say, you know, if you don't like a food the first time, you've got nine more tries. Sometimes it does take up to 10 times, different prep methods, different ways of, you know, com combining foods to really kind of like it. Thinking back to childhood, some kids like don't like broccoli forever. And then on the, you know, they just, it, they finally get it ourselves. We sometimes need to treat ourselves like infants, give yourself that kind of exposure. Um, you crave what you eat. So the more you eat something, the more you're likely to kind of want that and, you know, keep that up in your diet. So how does this look throughout the day? 
a day in the life, a sample plan. So looking at breakfast, um, this kind of outline was from adapted from a Southwestern egg scramble. So again, it's essentially what it is, is about a half a cup of black beans rinsed and heated, cook that with, you know, maybe one to two large eggs. You could throw in some more peppers, Brussels sprouts, whatever your favorite vegetables are. You could top that with a little salsa, cheese, and then the beans, and you get about six grams of fiber in that breakfast. Um, for the morning snack, um, a cup of raspberries and two tablespoons of the dry roasted almonds. There you go. 10 grams of fiber in that snack. Um, lunch, about 400 calories and five grams of fiber. Doing like a simple turkey and cheese melt. You could do that over two slices of that whole grain bread. Again, looking for bread that has three to five grams. Um, again, adding in that turkey for some protein. And then top that with a little mustard. You could even throw in some avocado for a little bit more fiber. Um, and sliced cheese, you know, just for a little added flavor as well. Um, afternoon snack, just a medium pair. I'll give you again, that six grams of fiber. Um, dinner, uh, again, you could do something with avocado, a sh avocado and shrimp chopped salad, or maybe shrimp's not your thing, chicken, you know, whatever it is. Um, add in some shaved carrots, cucumbers, maybe even celery or Brussels sprouts, um, and have that with a small wheat roll on the side, or even a potato with skin. Again, just watching portion sizes. Um, and that'll give you anywhere from like eight to 10 grams of fiber. All right, sound and look good. Pretty tasty. All right, so I also wanted to throw this in just to kind of show you that there's different options, you know, on the go that are, you know, fiber rich as well. So asking to see the menu is a good option. They will typically list, you know, calories, protein, fat, and also fiber on them. So it's not a bad idea. Um, but at Chipotle, one of you know, a really good options there is you could get a burrito bowl, you could ask for brown rice, or sometimes what I'll do is I'll ask for the salad and add brown rice on top of that. You're getting more greens, you're still getting the brown rice, but just not quite as much. Um, add in some corn and the fajitas to that, guacamole on the side, again, you got yourself a really good option. Um, the ancient grain and arugula salad from Panera, um, you could even pair that with a turkey cranberry flatbread. I know I'm going to get us all hungry in here. Um, another good option, Panera has done a really good job of adding in different whole grains and ancient grains into their menu. Um, so they're always usually typically a really good start. Um, breakfast oatmeal, both Starbucks and McDonald's have an option. I usually typically encourage to ask for without the brown sugar because they put a lot in it. If you ask to, you know, on the side or you can add your own, but again, breakfast oatmeal, they usually typically serve that with fruit. Um, Good option there. Um, there's a power Mediterranean salad from Wendy's. It should still be on the, on the menu, but it's a good source of protein. And again, they add some of those fiber and whole grains as well. Um, turkey sub on wheat at Subway is always a good one. They have a really good rotisserie chicken as well. Um, and Subway, maybe a little known fact, but they also do salads. They do a chopped salad at Subway. You get you know pretty much anything off their bar that you want, and they chop it up real nice, and it's pretty tasty. All right. So some final pointers before we dip into tonight's menu and Q&A. Um, aim for several servings of fiber every day. Not only do that, but try to space it out throughout the day. You know, getting all of your fiber at one time is not really so helpful for the gut to break down. So, you know, try to space it throughout your meals. And it doesn't have to be something that you're banging your head against the wall. Add in those colors from the fiber, fruits, and vegetables and got it including a vegetable at lunch or having those raw veggies as an afternoon snack or maybe like a little pre-dinner appetizer um, and enjoying a big helping with dinner is, you know, a good way to make sure you're getting that final little bit cap off your day. Um, and then making a point to also kind of have some vegetarian entrees options throughout the week will, again, kind of get you in that low ca lower calorie, high fiber realm. And um, I do think that eating vegetarian helps. You kind of have to get creative with what you're eating because you're not just going to want to eat a salad every day. That's not fun. That's boring. But again, dipping into some of those plant-based varieties will get you that fiber as well. All right. So without further ado, tonight's menu will be the watercress and spring pea soup with an herbed bulgur and lentil salad with some grilled chicken. All right. Thanks, guys.